Oh, we're back, baby. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another GingerRunner.com review. I've got the bear on a motorcycle shirt on, I've got the glasses on, I'm ready to break this down scientific-like. Today we're reviewing a pretty fun shoe from Skechers, the Go Run Ultra Road version 2. Mmm, Skechers. All right. So it's been a hot minute since I've reviewed a shoe from this brand, but I have not forgotten about them. Skechers is one of the brands that I had serious doubts about early on when I first started reviewing their shoes. And it's important to note that the Skechers Performance Division, where these shoes lie and all of the Go Run, Go Meb, all those shoes, is different than the Umbrella Skechers brand. Skechers is one of those brands that I had serious doubts about when I first started reviewing. The brand had major issues for me crossing that realm of cheap and casual shoes to actual performance running brand. Yes, they solved part of that issue by bringing on big celebrity runners like Kara Goucher, Kafleski, which is a super smart choice. In the end, I'm glad I gave them a shot. They managed to create some pretty advanced yet affordable shoes. They're comfortable. They'll work for a lot of different people's feet. Their biggest hurdle still, I imagine, is getting people used to the giant ass. Will people flock to Skechers as a running shoe brand? You get a lot of similar technologies as the bigger, more stylish brands, but in a far more affordable package. Not a bad thing. And I, for one, am glad that I continue to review Skechers performance shoes. I think they do a lot for very little. And this one, is no exception. A few years ago, I reviewed the Go Run Ultra Road version one. I enjoyed it. It had its problems. It was really heavy, fairly clunky, but there were some interesting and desirable factors at play that continued to make that shoe a go-to for me for longer distance road runs. Now this, what Skechers is calling the Ultra R2 or Ultra Road version two, has completely improved on the platform. New upper, new midsole, new outsole. So they pretty much completely improved the entire thing. And this could easily go up against some of the more well-known cushioned road shoes, such as the Clifton, the Paradigm, the Vimero. Forget about version one completely. Version two is pretty great. All right. So as with all my reviews, I like to talk about the things that I like and dislike. The shoe is no exception. Let's start as always with things that I like about the Skechers Go Run Ultra Road version two. Wait. One of my biggest problems with version one was how heavy it was, over 11 ounces. This weighs in at just around nine ounces in my size, size 11, which is a huge weight savings from the previous version, over two and a half ounces. It was the first thing I noticed just pulling them out of the box and it continues to give me a smile. A shoe with this much midsole, a woven upper weighing less than 10 ounces, that's a huge plus in my book. It's awesome to have all that without the weight. The upper, a nice new seamless woven upper, similar to the first version. I think the quality is improved here with uh, the second version. It's still very comfortable. It's seamless. It has plenty of breathability. It doesn't have a lot of the stretch that some of the other Skechers uppers do, which is actually a good thing because I find a lot of Skechers shoes just tend to be too flexible up top. This has good structure, decent quality, nice balance of materials. Loving the upper. Midsole cushioning. It's soft and you will love it on long runs. But if you do have a speed workout somewhere in the middle of a 20 mile run or something, you will feel the responsiveness of that midsole pop into play. It's nowhere near as soft as version one where your foot would actually exert more energy just trying to dig itself out of its own cushioning. The foam works with you rather than against you. And my final like is seemingly so small, but something I found I really like what they're calling the quick fit portal, or in other words, just this little loophole on the back of the heel. A lot of shoes out there have something similar, whether it's a vertical or horizontal loophole, but it's rare you find one that works so quickly and easily. I have to give them a plus for including this. I find myself using this every time I take the shoes on and off, which I didn't think I would even care about. So simple, yet so effective. All that being said, let's talk about the things that I dislike about the shoe. That's what you probably are caring about the most. Midsole arch. So this was one of those first initial problems I had with the shoe. The arch sits pretty far back in the midfoot. If you have arch problems or you're arch sensitive, you might notice it as much as I did, or maybe more so. It might ruin your experience in the shoe. For me, it managed to kind of flatten itself out over time. Now with close to 60 or 70 miles in the shoe, I don't notice it as much. But with the shoes, what they're calling M-Strike technology, it's essentially a midfoot rocker technology. When you strike here in the midfoot, the shoe wants to roll you into your forefoot. When you combine that with an arch that's further back, there's a bit of a conflict here inside the shoe. Again, my feet have gotten used to it. It's not a huge issue, but it will be something you notice. Outsole grip. You might notice a lot of rubber on the outsole. A lot of rubber does not translate to a lot of grip in this case. Anytime there was any sort of moisture in the air or on the ground, the shoe becomes an ice skate. There's just so little to actually get grip on any sort of rough surface, concrete, road, trail, gravel, anything, which is pretty different than version one, which had a little potted outsole. While I didn't necessarily like that, I don't like this. If you run in dry climates, you're not going to run into an issue. If you have any sort of weather at any point, this becomes a bit scary. And finally, width, primarily through 
the mid and forefoot. It's a generally narrow shoe. I don't necessarily need a huge wide shoe. I don't have giantly wide feet, giantly. But this upper, having a bias towards a more vertical volume, doesn't bode well for those who need a more horizontal amount of volume. It's very unforgiving in that department. I find myself with my pinky toe and my big toe having a fight at either end of my foot, a couple of times resulting in hot spots. I wish there was a little bit more width that carried up here through to the toes. That's generally it for my dislikes. Uh, I had a really good time in the Go Run Ultra road version 2 a lot more fun than version 1 which I also tended to enjoy so in conclusion if you're looking for a shoe that fits fairly neutrally that wants to go long distances the go run ultra road version 2 is a great go-to it's super light for how much cushion that you actually get out of the shoe it's decently comfortable affordable and comparing to the other max cushion models out there it can bat a home run just like the rest of them so let's get more specific let's talk about build quality Skechers is a big global brand they have the ability to fund research and development and create technologies that can really benefit runners. The materials are relevant and built better than you would assume from a brand whose shoes tend to go towards the cheaper price point. They don't necessarily skimp on quality. Comfort, it's there. A lot of it. The cushion is not sloppy like the previous version. It's soft yet responsive, gets you what you need when you need it. The upper is seamless and comfortable, though those with wider feet might run into some fitment issues up here in the toe box, which brings me to fitment. Shoe fits true to size. I'm a size 11. Size 11 works for me. Just make note of the tightness up in the toe box. Getting a good fit in this shoe is easier than some of the other sketchers that I currently have going through rotation. Price $115, which is not a terrible price for a shoe that you're going to get hundreds of miles out of. We'll probably enjoy racing and training in. And compared to other models, which are more expensive, but get you essentially the same thing. That's a great price point. And finally, looks. The S will continue to scare some of you. I encourage you to look beyond the label and try the shoe on for yourself. The look of this, I think, is one of the better looking Skechers shoes. I still think it's okay looking. It's about as good looking as a Hoka, so you really need to let them grow on you. And of course, beauty is always in the eye of the beholder. So the grand conclusion, is it a buy, try, or a why? This is a solid buy. It's a decent price point for a shoe that you're going to get hundreds of miles out of. Lots of comfort, lots of cushioning in a really lightweight package. I'm a fan, and I'm glad I got a pair. So that, my friends, is it for today's review of the Skechers Go Run Ultra Road version 2. I'm curious, have you run in these? If you have or have comments about other Skechers shoes that you've run in, in the comments below of this video, let me know what you think. As always, if you like this video, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the bell for notifications every time we upload a new video. Lots of fun over on social media is being had by me. And of course, if you want to keep the lights on and the mics hot here, you want to see videos happen every single week, consider joining the Patreon crew at patreon.com slash the ginger runner. So that is it, my friends. I hope you're enjoying the reviews, the videos, all that good stuff, and you're getting out there training hard, racing harder, and parting the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for a really fun director's cut of the Lost Coast Fastest Known Time video. That should be fun. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.